Action. Would you like to take it, Taylor? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Bus and Spring Tour. We are at one of the most prestigious universities in the entire world. Of the all Tennessee time. of all time. More than Nebraska, more than Michigan. I uh, wouldn't go that we'll far, but I would say We'll put it in the top five so everyone feels there. super happy about this thing. The Tennessee Volunteers. Let's give it a And we're with Coach Hype. He wanted to go by that. That's his nickname he gave to himself. Electra Stack to have you on the yeah, pod today. I gave it to myself. He gave it. <laughs> Something along those How lines. How did you get that? Oh, just hey, hang on, hang on. Them. Presented by? Oh, presented by Chevy. The durable, most reliable vehicle. It's like the Peyton Manning of, of vehicles. You know it's going to give That's you the a same thing pool. with time. That is a yeah. good pool. You know what you're going to get. I don't know where I got it from. Durable, dependable, room. hardworking. Yeah. Reliable. Peyton Manning. Strong. <laughs> yeah, Accurate. Everything. So how did you get the name uh, Coach Hype? Is it just, just uh, nobody can pronounce my last name, so you got to shorten it, give them something they can yeah. remember. It's tough. <laughs> it's like, is it Hupel, Hupe, all that kind of yeah. stuff? I was and nervous I, coming in. I didn't really, yeah. I that's wasn't why, 100%. That's why you got the sweat going? Well, the sweat just goes because I'm out in the field, and Will, he wants to walk on the field. I've got to oh, respect buddy, and love on, the game of football. Yeah. Don't no disrespect. walking between the white lines. No, yeah. no walking between the white lines. I had to get a couple of your players. I like, come on, let's go. If you're walking, Guys you're are wrong. sweating, hurting a little bit. You find anybody to walk. You were going right outside the stadium. You see people walking all the time. It's disrespectful. Um, you were chirping me a little bit about Oklahoma. You were chirping me about Nebraska, but then quickly remembered the heartbreaker at Memorial Stadium. That was an incredible game, an incredible atmosphere. I would love for you to speak on how high and all-time the energy was at the University of Nebraska. Yeah, that was a great game. Uh, a huge win for you guys at, at that time uh, as you guys were uh, kind of rebuilding and coming up at that time. And defensively had a, a huge, uh, huge day. Uh, quarterback You're had, the OC, right? I was the QB coach that day. Uh, quarterback had a rough day. I think we threw four picks. Landry? And it was Landry. Yeah. It was Landry. Um, but uh, we found a way to rebound and, you know, had a great day in Dallas in 2010 oh, uh, conference championship game. We, we yeah. were up, what, 17 I didn't, I didn't talk about that off air. Yeah, yeah. We, we were up. <laughs> you kept on the holster. You had receipts that, on you. Bro, right. we were up 17 to nothing. Number one, the year before is when we lost to Texas by that one second. Yeah. I talk about it all the time. He says that they don't deserve the win at all. And the whole next year we're wearing these bracelets, right? That's back when the bracelet fad was happening. Yeah. And we had, Still a a one, we had a one second bracelet we had to wear the entire year because it was all about that one second. We make it all the way back to the Big 12 championship, our last year in the Big 12. So I think that there was some stuff at play there. Hard feelings. That's why yeah, you guys yeah, yeah, left. Yeah. Yeah. And the news up, is already out. When did you guys break that you were going to the Big 10? What's up? When did you all break that you were going to the Big 10? Um, Earlier that, the, before that the season started? Years later that spring. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so they, everyone knew. Yeah. Oh, so the whole Big 12 hated y'all. Yeah. And we were up 17 uh, nothing, bro. And they come back and beat us, what, 24-17? Like, we went scoreless. Like, we stopped. Something like that, yeah. We stopped uh, messing with Burkhead. We stopped running him for whatever reason. We put the game in Taylor Martinez's hands. I love Ta Taylor. I love you, brother. But he was young then. He was young then. Turnover machine, though. But he cost this us This is 2010? Game. Yeah, I think so. Maybe this was the year before the second yeah. year. But Nebraska loves the Martinez's. Loves them. come back. Yeah, the reason why you don't, you, you should always run Bur Burkhead, especially in college. I Guys, guess. a stud, he's still grinding to this day. Yeah, he is. Getting after it, just a salty white dude. Yeah, me Plano's know. finest. He you is. Um, but obviously enough about my old glory days. Um, dude, so, you, you used to sling the rock. You used to sling the pigskin. Yeah. I would love to hear about like you being a player because you're like a newer, you're like a newer coach, right? I mean, I guess, f fuck, man, it's, it's 22, 22 years, years ago. 22 years, so really not that new. Right. Yeah, but, you, you ain't got to date me like that. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, I mean hey, you were a, a consensus All-American. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, you you sling it around. Sling around national championship winner Yeah, for the Sooners. Just to be able to uh, throw it around. Can still throw it a little bit out there uh, on, on the practice field every once in a while. Do you mm -hmm. mix it up out there with them? Uh, not when it's live action. Certainly not. But uh, uh, Thursdays and Fridays, which our tempos are a little bit down, I'll, I'll play a catch with those guys. Do a little f uh, fat and slow, a uh, little pat and go uh, action on Fridays. With nice. The, the you got to give the big guys a chance to catch the ball. Have a little fun. They got to touch yeah. the ball too, right? Now, do you guys have anything in the playbook right now for those big guys? Yeah, we don't have the tackle screen in right, right now, but that's no. something you and I can talk about off air. I'll give you a couple things. <laughs> get close to the get on the goal line too, make a, oh, make a no tackle question. eligible. And you, you, don't, you can't uh, report eligible in college, right? Uh, no, but you can be in an eligible pass. position. A absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I got a couple things for you now. A couple things from the Titans we never, we never brought out of the books. I like it. Might give you a couple things. I don't know. Uh, it was up for me. But. I'm curious. I would like you to talk about... Because as somebody, I was coming out of college. Fortunately, I've got, I've, uh, I've had a, a, a career that I feel like 
I've been lucky to have, but my mindset coming out of college was I wanted to be a coach. And you went from college to uh, you had a little stint in the NFL and then you transitioned into coaching. Did you go from playing to a GA? Did you get right into a coaching position? Talk to us through that because you went from all American opportunities in the NFL and then you become a coach right away and you've quickly climbed the ranks as like a head coach of a prestigious university. Yeah, for sure. I actually grew up around the game. My dad was a small D2 uh, head football coach and, and whenever playing was going to be over, you know, it felt like that was where I was going to gonna head. And, and uh, it ended a lot quicker than I wanted to. I had an injury, uh, couldn't pass any physicals on the back end of it. And opportunity came up to, to GEA, um, you know, worked with quarterbacks, spent some time with the offensive line, which actually was one of the best things that I ever did. Just understood the schemes and, and uh, you know, targets and, and, and the fundamentals, but just really diving into it, I, I think has helped me as, as a full-time coach and as an offense coordinator and, and now as a head coach, understanding the game from a, a different perspective than just playing quarterback. Yeah, no doubt. What was your, what was your mindset like when you were – when you get drafted in the sixth round, when you go to the Miami Dolphins, it was Miami, right? Yeah. You yeah. go to Miami, and then when did you sustain that injury you were talking about? Was that in Miami, or was it the next year in Green Bay? Yeah, in Miami. In uh, Miami. Yeah, uh, might have had a little bit of it, uh, you know, on the back end of the, of the college career, too. Oh, really? And, and uh, um, anyways, you know, you go in and compete. I don't think, you know, as a competitor, you know, my road just through college was a junior college uh, player and then, then went to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Uh, you're fighting and competing every single day. Right. And that's true no matter what round you're drafted in, right? You got a little bit of security if you're a first, second round pick, but man, you got to go in and earn it and learn it and, and take jobs, man. And, uh, um, you know, so for me, that that's the mindset that I was going to have. Uh, always had a, a coach's perspective a little bit, mm -hmm. smart, cerebral, control things at the line of scrimmage. Love thought that it. was a, a big part of, of who I was as a player. All those things transitioned into, into the coaching world and, and all the skills that you learn while you're playing football, Man, they become a piece of you when you're when you're coaching, and and truly, you know, we talk to our players about man. You get out in the real world, and when you guys are done playing, mm -hmm. like it's all things and traits that you've learned, life skills to to go be successful in life too. And when you go from winning a national championship at Oklahoma, being drafted, I mean, you're you probably walk into Oklahoma and catch a free meal wherever you go right now, still to this day. When all I can do that in Knoxville too. Can you really? <laughs> let's yeah, go. yeah, let's go, dude. Let's go. The players can now legally, I'm sure. Before you yeah, know, the NIL right. doesn't that, that SEC. Never happened before. Yeah, we know about the <laughs> SEC. We're very aware of what goes down out here, dude. I'm uh, I'm curious because I agree with you 100. percent All the things you learn in football, like it's the best game, right? To yeah. transition into life and everything else, you learn about all the characteristics you need to kind of transition to the real world, so to speak. Uh, but I'm super curious. Like, was that frustrating when you're going through injury, having a decorated college career because you don't you don't have this mindset that you have now that you're able to give to the young guys that you're able to right. carry as a coach when you're like younger things come off absolutely more, everything's bigger there's right. mountains 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 and and I, well, what I was going to say in the uh, from the last question is when you go through those things going back to Oklahoma and having to go and now do a GA job, where like your mindset is that kind of where you're going with that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you hijacked the, you just hijacked my <laughs> question. <laughs> that was actually <laughs> gonna be my question. That was gonna be. But it. I'm just curious. Like, uh, I would love to know about the hardship of that transition because, um, as somebody like being undrafted, being a lower round guy, right? Low round undrafted, and you're going through injuries, and there's a lot of fear and anxiety. Is am I gonna make this fucking team? And you got a lot of people right. I'm sure for you, I wasn't an All American, but I'm thinking I can only assume you you feel pressure from being an All-American and feeling like you have an expectation and the way people look at you. Can you talk about the hardships of the transition for a little bit? Yeah, I think the, the outside perspective of, you know, what people think you should be doing, there's some of that, but I think as an elite competitor, right, and, and somebody that, that reaches success, I don't care if it's college football or the NFL, man, you're so driven inwardly that that's the pressure that you feel more than anything else is, is the expectation of yourself because mm -hmm. of the work that you've put into it. Certainly felt that when I, I got drafted, where I went, you know, you're going through a rehab process. I think uh, the, the transition to the NFL, similar but different than, you know, transition from high school to college, there's so many unknowns, right? Yeah. In that first year, like, you're trying to figure everything out and the anxiety that comes with all the nervous energy because of the unknowns makes it a really difficult year. When you go through the transition of, of injury, having to rehab, man, that weighs on you in a, mm -hmm. in a completely different way than, than people can understand unless they've been through that process. So you feel all that, absolutely. It's a, it's a really unique and hard time in life. I think when you get done playing, 
and it's not that you solely identify yourself as a player, but man, there was a purpose and a goal and really a schedule laid out for you every single day and what you had to do in life. The next day you wake up and you're like looking around, man, who's going to help me figure this thing right, out? Right. You know? And how do I get Absolutely. going and what's next? You know, you guys have figured out kind of what's next for you guys, you know, mm-hmm. and I think that's the unique thing for some guys that play a long time, right, that are still in, in their careers is they can start planning that transition while they're still playing. Yeah. Do you think the NIL stuff might help with that too, as guys, when they're getting paid to do certain things and realizing you can kind of make money outside of football? Because when you're in college, I mean, the Big Ten, not in the SEC, you're just trying to make it. You get only your rent checks. You're not getting paid by boosters or nothing. So you're kind of just living your life. You know what I'm saying? You're just living. But I'm saying, do you think it gives these kids an opportunity to kind of see, okay, there are other avenues I can take other than football to make relationships and, and get jobs and kind of shrink in that anxiety that you kind of get when you have to transition? I think one of the great things about NIL is that it has forced kids to understand that they have a brand and image and the choices that they make transitioning into college football, you know, have a huge impact on their future and potential uh, earning power. Mm -hmm. Um, The issues that maybe I've had to deal with previously as a head coach, man, very few of, of those things are showing up right now because they are so uh, understanding and, and uh, have a global view of what they're trying to accomplish. It changes the mindset. It yeah. changes the opportunities. See, so, yeah, like 10, I mean, 10 or so years ago when I was in college. Back in our day. Back in our day. Back in our It was kind of like social media was kind of coming out. Like <laughs> when I was like Facebook was a thing. Twitter wasn't really a thing yet. And then all of a sudden all these social media accounts are coming out and these players are like trying to establish themselves, their personalities on stuff. And a lot of coaches look at us and go, well, what the fuck are you guys doing? You should be focused only on football. Like you don't need this stuff. And now it seems like, like your, your view on it, has your view always been like the same as it is right now with NIL stuff? Have you always like encouraged players to kind of be who they are? Or is it- Man, I I play the game and I was as uh, competitive as anybody. I still am today. Um, I was as focused on being successful on the field as anybody uh, in the locker room. Uh, I never felt like I gave an inch in in any area. But man, there's still a balance to your life, right? And you know, in college, there's an academic portion of it, but there's a social portion of it too. What happens is that takes up some of that social time. There's less dead time because they are interested in in different pursuits outside of of football. Um, At the end of the day, the football and the brand and your name on your jersey and the the power of how you play is the most important marketing tool that you right. have. Don't lose sight of that. It's okay to have those other, other interests and, and keep it within the scope of the team. Mm-hmm. What's it, uh, what's it been like stepping into this job? Because over the past, like I'm not a diehard Tennessee guy, but over the past several years, there's been like a, it's been shuffling in coaches out left and right. What's it been like for you stepping into a job like this at a prestigious program, having a year kind of, you know, label it, whatever you want, rebuilding, whatever, having some success, but how have you backed by a lot of the fans too? You know, Jack was in the car saying oh, how Jack. great Tennessee, how great Tennessee is. Well, well I thought y'all won the Natty last year. He's a diehard. And that goes for, but that doesn't just go for Jack. It goes for Tennessee fans all across. I mean, yeah. Nashville. I like Jack, man. Yeah, we Jack rips. Yeah, Jack yeah, does Jack, rip. Jack's Shout all out about to it, bro. They go hard in Nashville, but it kind of seems like there's such a long line of tradition here, and it really reminds me of, of Michigan in a lot of ways, where, like, 90s and early 2000s, like a lot of relevance. It all goes back to Michigan, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, hey, listen, <laughs> no one doesn't want to know. I hijacked my question again. <laughs> I did it again. I just sit back, like, all right, go ahead and take well, it. Well, I'm just kind of, I was, just, I was trying to add to the question. Well, I'm sorry, we're having a bad, we're, our chemistry today is tough, and it's probably on me. But it does seem like people in Tennessee, Tennessee fans, are thrilled about you as a coach and where this program is headed. Yeah, if you got great leadership, and we got unbelievable uh, athletic director, chancellor, president, right? If if there's a in sync vision of what we want to accomplish, our athletic director and I have worked together before, like clear understanding of what we're trying to accomplish, win on the field, but great uh, academic and athletic experience for, for our, our student athletes. Man, then, then you can just go to work, man. We're able to have uh, hire great staff here. You know, Tennessee's an iconic brand, man. Top 10 in the history of college football and wins, first round draft picks, anything you want to do, you can do right here. The, the fan base is as passionate and as big as any in America. 
That's why there's 102,000 plus seats inside that stadium. Um, you know, we get a chance to put a new age approach on an iconic brand, and and that's what we're doing. Uh, we've built great chemistry inside of our building. You guys were out at practice. You saw the culture, the energy, the competitiveness that we have. Mm-hmm. We've got great coaches that, that are great teachers and mentors, and uh, now we just get to build it every single day. Um, you know, the foot traffic that we have in recruiting uh, gives us the ability to go chase championships. That's what we're going to do. Uh, speaking of fan base, I was at the uh, the Tennessee Ole Miss game when I was trying to link up with you the first time. But uh, what do you? The atmosphere of that game was insane. Like I'm obviously diehard Nebraska guy. I feel like we have the best fans in the country. We're the nicest for sure. Yeah, uh, but it's nicest, a, yeah. it's it's there's some violence in uh, here. There's some violence at <laughs> this stadium. There's passion, some passion for sure. Yeah. Talk to us about how everything unfolded at the end of the game. And I would love a take. Did you love what you saw from the fan base at the end? Listen, uh, as, a, as, a, as a competitor, right, I, I've driven down the, the interstate and seen Vol Navy with 250, 300 boats tied up. It's a unique setting in all of college sports. They talked about Vol Walk before the season. I, in all of reality, I was kind of skeptical. Man, there's not really 40,000 people out there. It is unlike anything in sports. You yes, walk down bro. the hill, you hang a left, you go through gate 27, man. And there is a swarm of people. It is electric. My son walked down with me. We take our kids on, on ball walk, play catch with them in the end zone for five minutes, man. His eyes were just massive when we turned the corner and saw that, that group of people. Um, in the stadium, I mean, you were there that night. It was crazy, that, that, bro. Bro, that, I'm talking, like, I, obviously, I'm not sitting here, like, condoning violence and people getting hurt, but the vibe to me was, like, going into a Philadelphia Eagle Stadium yeah. where you're Hardcore. in the division and they, they don't like that you're there. There's mm. obviously a history with Kiffin and all that stuff, but it was, like, they don't want you at the stadium. And it's rowdy. Like, as a player, like, you love kind of playing in that environment yeah, because you you're want, like, this, you want, this you is the ball, bro. It was. It, it, man, they care. They're there in their seat 60 minutes before kickoff. You can feel it. You yes. know what I mean? They, they, had a great, really? they had a great afternoon tailgating, but they're in the stadium early. Uh, you're going to hear them all night long. Um, shoot, Rocky Top's going to get played 50 times while you're in the stadium yeah. for four hours. And uh, you saw the, that event unfold, right? You know, some of the things. Long, that, number one, it was the longest game. For sure. College game, especially right. the first quarter. Fill me in. I'm in the middle of the season. Phil, what, what exactly happened? A lot that of was dehydra- so- there was a lot of dehydration by the Ole Miss guys. Exactly. They didn't. They didn't drink before the. Uh, before the <laughs> <laughs> didn't drink before the football game. Yeah, yeah bro. A couple of calls that uh, might have not gone our way. That uh, what that calls didn't go fans, your way? And do you uh, agree there, there's or a scoop and score, strip scoop score. Yeah, there, there's. That was a, in the first quarter, right? Yeah, there's a first down on a. On and a so fourth was somebody down? Call. Do you think the person that uh, fumbled the ball? Was down? Yeah. I, uh, can I borrow your checkbook? I don't want to get fined. No, I hear you. Yeah, listen. <laughs> no, and then at the end of the game. Tennessee's got the facilities. They got the money. At the end of the game, um, it just got rowdy. People are throwing uh, golf balls, mustard. Like How do they have golf balls? They just keep them in the back pocket? And it got to, they had to get the players off of the field mm. because it was just getting so bad. You couldn't even really play the game because yeah, people I mean, are throwing stuff on the field. It yeah, was hilarious. No way. Yeah, I mean, the the... The major point of that night is the three hours and 59 minutes of that crowd. Like, that's my takeaway. This is as good a place as there is in college football, man. Yeah, and if you don't want to say it, I'll say it. Tennessee fans, keep that up. Like, keep doing that Yeah, that's stuff. that big dick energy, Keep bro. being absolutely aggressive because you want that. When, like, when Michigan go to Ohio State, it's like, I feel like I'm going to get assaulted after this game. We lost. But I feel even that wasn't good enough for them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's they were trying to take your lives. And it sounds like that's kind of what's going on here. I, I love our fans. I wouldn't yeah. change a thing about our fans. What was man. the what was the thing you were talking about? The Vol Navy? And you said yeah. it was like, what is, what is that? That's one of two stadiums in the country where uh, you can drive a boat up and and go tailgate and go to the game. And there's no 250, way. 300 boats tied up having a party. A little redneck yacht club. Them. It is 100. percent Friday night we drive to the hotel. You know they're honking their horns and and having a good old time as as we're heading to the hotel. And Saturday. You're going to see him before kickoff, too. Hey, you yeah, got to play hooky one of those games. You know, know what I'm saying? Right? Don't just go out with the Navy. <laughs> yeah, I That know. sounds like a hell of a deal. No doubt. So be, uh, before you got here, you're at Oklahoma. And where'd you go from Oklahoma after that? Was that uh, was Utah, Utah State? Utah State for a year, Missouri for two, and hey, then first UCF offer. for three. Utah State. So. <laughs> God damn it, dude. <laughs> when you went to, um, so you went to Utah State, sorry, Mizzou for a year, and where else? I was, I was Mizzou, Mizzou for two, uh, UCF for uh, yeah. for three on the back end. Of, of, all, of all those schools, which one was probably your favorite to coach? 
I, I think outside you, of Tennessee. Uh, unique, outside of Tennessee. Yeah, we're not talking about Tennessee right now. Unique opportunity, just being first time head coach at, at UCF. Love of the guys that we had in the building, yeah. and, and uh, a passionate fan base down there too. Now UCF, there's a lot of controversy. I think the year before you got there. Yeah. It's always controversial. Yeah, and so people are saying they won a national championship. Do you agree? Uh, they went undefeated and beat the only teams that, uh, or they were the only undefeated team. So absolutely. So you think over Alabama, yeah. they have the national championship? Why, why would I not agree with the, with the guys that uh, where I was at? I'm with you because we, we were Respect. talking in agreeing in the, uh, in the car. Like if you're undefeated, ain't no other games being played. Nobody can touch you. Why, like would we they, beat, why we, weren't they let in then? We got a playoff now. You know what I mean? Let, uh, keep expanding it. Well, the playoff and, was then too, right? There's a yeah, but they didn't, they, 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 didn't, they didn't uh, get in. They yeah, didn't, they didn't get in. in. Yes, they were on like the Cincinnati outside looking in. in. Mm. Yeah, it's got to be tough. Do you think because of that, they should redo the playoff system? Like maybe you should take one from each Power 5 school and then allow two more? Man, I, I don't know what the right thing to do with the, the college football playoff is. It's just flawed now. Day, uh, you know, but, you want to find the best. Oh, uh, I think hey, when you get, said, look, think about this when you were in college, though, right? Mm -hmm. Just, you know, we didn't make, sniff the playoffs. That, that might be right. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't sniff them. But go ahead. What were you going to say? You say, got that look but, in your eye. Yeah. If you're the GM of the college football playoff and you had your little fantasy world, you're hanging in the house, you're playing GM mode on the on the Xbox. Right. What layout would you have if you got to create your own playoff? No one's and I think it's real simple. You take the top four teams from the SEC and play it out. Get the fuck oh, out of here, God. <laughs> that was that good. is I'm ridiculous. Oh, really God. Is you got to respect that, but is bullshit it, is on that. It, is it really? I mean, you got Ohio State, you got Michigan. Dog, is, is it really? That's what I'm saying. You guys let us down in the playoff this year. Listen, I know we fucked up, all right? We messed up. But we were in that thing. Dog, if Nebraska's in it, we would have lost by three points. No question. There's no question about points. that. You guys would have probably had Single a Single-digit loss. The best three and nine team in the history of, of the college NCAA. ball. Yeah. Of college ball. Of college ball. Zero score differential throughout the season. So you're really drinking the cooler like the SEC is the best conference by Look far. Yeah, man, he's at this, Tennessee. This is why you want to coach and play in this league. It absolutely is the best league in America. So you yeah. would, if uh, let's say Tennessee, <laughs> I, I, I let's say Tennessee I, wasn't even a school. Hey, it doesn't you're, exist. You're just going to keep, <laughs> at, you're, you're gonna keep asking school. questions well, until I give you the answer. It's that my you job. Want. <laughs> this, is you my, this, this is how I get paid now. That you want. That yeah. football, but yeah. That was a phenomenal answer, though. Gosh damn it. You, did, well, uh, you got us if, on that. If Tennessee wasn't, like, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't working here. <laughs> Would you take another SEC school I, I or would you be the head coach? I am your coach. I'm saying, I'm hey, I'm hypothetical. We're living in a fantasy world. And uh, Tennessee doesn't exist. Oklahoma offers you. Yeah. Hey, hey, when I was at UCF, I, I thought it should have been three SEC teams in UCF when we were undefeated in the regular season. This man. He's, he's unbreakable. He's smart. He's good. He's that's, why, good that's why he's, yeah, where he's, he's at. Good. Going into uh, year two, like what kind of leaps are you looking to make this year? Because year one, you're obviously in a very much, what do we have? How do we build the culture? How do we do all these things? Now a year in the system, a year in the culture and everything else. What is like a year two jump? You like to see the guys make a message across the board. It's like, all right, guys. We never put a ceiling on ourselves in year one either, right? Uh, a lot of guys chose UT. They didn't necessarily choose me, man. We both chose the power T at the end of the day. I thought we came together. We competed extremely hard um man there's a million different ways that, that you got to grow I, I think the leadership and the culture and the consistency and the accountability inside of the room has to continue to grow it has during the off season and, and through spring ball i spent a lot of time on just leadership from within championship teams happen because of the the championship culture that's inside of that locker room you know coaches they change, they grow, but man, it's not drastically different from year to year, man. It's got to start inside. And so we've tried to build that ownership from, from within and, and uh, you know, just got to continue to grow that way here as we go through our off season. He's good. Yeah, he's, he's good. Solid. Can I get some I'd, water? I'd vote for him. Should we do the Duke Cannon question? Well, I have one more question, right. then we can have right. the Duke Cannon question. And it's a simple one. As a coach, when you bring recruits in here, what's your selling point to these kids? What do you tell them? The power of the I tea, mean, man. The power of the tea. What, you to say education on me? You gonna say facilities? <laughs> all, all those things. All those all things, man. This is college football as good as it gets. It, it, it truly is. The the history of it, the tradition, the passion and pageantry of, of the fan base. Um, you know, you look at the facilities. You look at what this university and the city has to offer. Uh, it's a really special uh, four-year opportunity, and, and uh, you know we're going to be the most aggressive football team in America. I, I honestly believe that. People get caught up in, in what we are offensively because of my background. 
that's how we play defensively. It's what we do on special teams. And if you want to play the most exciting brand in college football, this is the place. You've got every tool and resource to become your best. It is an unbelievable city to live in. I think that's one of the things that I didn't understand in coming here. I thought all the resources, all the facilities, yeah, those things are, are all here. But Knoxville is an unbelievable city, man. There's real that's, personal and professional cool. growth. It is a fantastic place to live. So our final it's question, matter of fact, I, I thought of a second one, too. Go ahead. That's going to be the Duke Cannon segment. segment. Not for clowns. Not for we clowns. actually got a nice, so as you see over there, all of our product. You this is for the, him? You got deodorant? Yeah, we have this a- This is uh, for you. I might need to take this. Duke Cannon, this is our yeah. NIL deal for you. <laughs> for it's sure. an entire package. And hey, and I swear, this is, this, is on, this is on Nebraska. Wow. Duke Cannon, that shit is legit. Like, it is legit. It's on me. It's on my armpits. I did a little, uh, uh, what is it, the uh, shower pill, like the rag. Yeah, the, cold the, the rag I was, I the I rag I was putting on before. Yeah, yeah, I got the cologne, the solid yeah. cologne in there that can go on. You rub it on your neck. It's not like spray. You can rub it on yourself. Yeah. It's phenomenal. It'll be great for Coach this stuff. This stuff's unbelievable, too, because you put this on, cooling effect. You start to get a little warm outside, the pits aren't, though. You can put it anywhere you want, and this thing keeps you nice and cool the whole right. time. It's, it's, it's an outstanding brand. And this uh, segment is brought to us by Duke Cannon. Shout out Duke Cannon. No not free for clowns. Um... The Purdue game, the game, the play on the goal line, which is the Big Ten, by the way. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Let's do. We yeah. That's yeah, a side you, piece. You know. That's a side piece. That was a Big Ten ball, right? That's big. Big Ten branded football, yeah, right? He has there. ruined our field. You're claiming Big Ten. Oh, Nebraska. So I claim Big yeah. Ten. I'm, okay. so I'm, I didn't know. Yeah, you know, I mean, you're a Big Twelve guy when you played. The, well, I hey, played. Hang on he now. Was Big Twelve. Hang and. on now. Big 12, two years, Big 10, two years. Okay. I ended my junior and senior year in the Big 10, so I can I claim you. Big you 10 a little bit more. Yeah, I okay. can claim that a little got bit more. I was just a freshman when we lost to you guys, so if I was like a senior and playing, we'd probably win that championship game. Um, <laughs> leadership. Yeah. Leadership. But what, right. what are your, th your thoughts on that last play, your actual emotion? Like, who did you want to strangle? And Use names. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go to the replay again. Yeah, but, sure. but, but, your, but your thoughts on that last play, clearly I think uh, everyone feels like you guys got gypped for sure. And I, you know, I can be man enough to say that, but I would yeah, love to know. At the end of the day, don't put it in somebody else's hands. We got an opportunity to, to make a bunch of different plays, different play calls, all of those things that can factor in and how we win the football game and regulation are at the end of it. Uh, at the end of the day, people that that, uh, that watch the football game could probably read my lips and, and uh, see the disappointment in the uh, outcome of that call. What's You say don't leave it into the hands of somebody else, but I would almost argue, like as a player watching it all happen, like that's clearly a play that shouldn't be in the hands of anybody except like the players. Because to me, I feel like somebody's just coming in there to hijack the game. Hijack's your new word of the day. I, I do yeah. feel like that. Yeah, I do yeah, yeah. Like I feel like you're not really leaving it up to the refs. Like the play was happening. The progress was happening. Nothing was really stopping. And all of a sudden, we're blowing whistles and stopping the play short. Yeah, I mean, you said it as good as you could. <laughs> He's solid. I dude. love it, dude. A lot of people, when they come on Busting with the Boys, can't handle the pressure of how big of a deal this is. Yeah. You've done an amazing job. Like, Vrabel came on, so he cut his dick off for a Super Bowl. <laughs> he was He's obviously talking crazy. He was rattled. He, he was, it was, <laughs> the lights were too big for him. But you're handling this like it's nothing right now. It's... The volunteers got themselves a coach. Yeah, they do. I am uh, Coach Eck. I, I've been with Coach Eck for a yeah. while. He has a lot of good things to say about you. Not that I don't know how much credibility he actually has, but it um, depends on the day. Right. <laughs> I know it's, it's like babysitting that guy. Yeah, He's fiery, bro. A lot of energy. S same workout every day. He got, uh, now I'm, I'm going to say arrested to make the story better, but he got picked up by the cops on the highway from running like 17 miles on the freeway. After a, uh, after a spring practice, backers apparently had a good uh, practice must day. must have balled out. He didn't need to watch yeah. the film. Yeah, <laughs> and he went and ran on the freeway <laughs> and got, you know, not pulled over. He's running, but got picked up by the cops. Like, hey, fast, though, hey this over. is illegal. You can't do this. <laughs> picked him up, put him in the back of the cop car, and drove him to the stadium. But the dude is a, dude is a wild man. But uh, the second question I had, I would love to hear a good recruiting story. We had hard – so – let me let me give some context about like what Coach Bo Pelini had said. Coach Bellini, Coach Pelini one time was at a recruit's house. He's trying to recruit a kid, and in the back he hears a family member or somebody else like watching porn. So wow. he hears porn going on while he's in Florida recruiting. He's pulled into like uh, tough parts of California trying to pull up and go recruit somebody, and they take off running and jump the fence, thinking like the feds are pulling up. Yeah. Do you have a good story, whether it's a fail, like whether it's a big fail, like I'll adjust, do something different next time, or something that's funny that you like to talk about or just tell 
you know, the boys about. Yeah, one A.J. Brown said that Harbaugh walked into his house with cleats on, correct? Yeah. But and Harbaugh didn't give us much. He said, oh, I don't really have many. It's yeah, like, oh, which is crazy because you know Harbaugh's like, everyone says he's the craziest recruiter. But um, A.J. Brown said that Harbaugh came into his house with his cleats on and refused to take his cleats off. And he was like, I'm for sure not going there. Yeah. For sure not going to that school. But yeah, which I mean, he says I, I a lot. I can understand. <laughs> I can understand that. I, mine's not a home visit, man. I, I'd go to my first uh, first time as a full time coach, being out on the road. Uh, I, I'm gonna be gone for three straight weeks. Got a nice Cadillac. I mean, luxury vehicle, looking good, floating down the road. And end up going at this time. Uh, you guys might remember, like the old Nike combines. Coaches could go to those. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm at uh, uh, at the University of Houston. Uh, park my car. I'm gonna go watch the combine. And uh, that area, Houston's a little bit rough at at, uh, at parts. And, and uh, I come out three hours later, and my caddy is completely stripped. There's nothing. To- <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, my God. God. Hey, it's my first weekend there, too. So for the next two weeks, man, I'm going from school to school. No hubcaps, <laughs> nothing on my car. Oh, that just, is just pimped out riding down the road. <laughs> oh, my God. That's awesome. Did you offer any kids over there at that night? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, hey, man, we'd love for you to just come to our school yeah. just yeah. in a busted Pulls caddy. all the wheels kind of yeah. right, right. Outstanding. Yeah. Um, thanks for coming on, man. This is awesome. We appreciate your time. Appreciate, you. appreciate you guys being here, man. You got anything for us? Do you have any questions for us? Nah, any insights to the office line, Will? <laughs> nothing? No, you and I are going to talk a little bit afterwards. Yeah, that's true. I do Let's have go. a couple things for you. you. Got some athletes out there, too. You like, you like what you saw? Yeah, I do. I think I think those guys move well. We walked up right when they were running games and stuff like that. And so there's one kid, uh, 55, small, right guard, grinder. I saw him dump a kid in practice, and I heard the old-fashioned, hey, stand up, stay keep up. up. Yeah, stay, stay up. up from the line. And coach. he takes a big step over him like it's nothing. It was uh, it was fun to watch. It was fun being a part of that practice. I appreciate you guys coming out. Guys, enjoy getting a chance to hang with you a little bit on the practice field. Thanks, man. We appreciate it. Appreciate it. Shout out the Bustin Football Spring Tour. Coach Hype, we just had him on. Phenomenal interview. The dude is a professional. Uh, but rooting for you guys, man. If I'm not rooting for Nebraska and I'm not rooting for Michigan, I'm rooting for Tennessee. I like it. Go Big Orange. <laughs>